Hey, what's up guys? In this video, what I wanted to teach you is how to use the color grading feature in Lightroom. I know this can be kind of an intimidating tool that you can use because maybe you haven't used color grading in the past. I use color grading all the time for video content and I'm really excited that they put it into Lightroom. So let me just take you through how to do this with one of my favorite photos that I just got from Great Smoky Mountains National Park. As you can see in this image, we have a lot of mid-tones, we have a lot of shadow detail, and we have a lot of highlights. Now, I think color grading is impactful more than split toning in a situation like this because we have such a broad spectrum in our dynamic range when we're out photographing. A lot of detail in shadows, a lot of detail in highlights, and in those midtones too. So we can go through each one in color grading and impact those. So what I like to do is just impact what color is already there. Instead of using the color grading wheels as they all show up together, I like to go through each one of those. Now you can toggle through those with these little circles up here at the top. And first it gives you your shadow tones. So what I like to do is just find in the shadows, you know, what details and what colors are already there. In my shadows in this image, I have a lot of purple tones coming through. So that's the color of the color grading that I'm going to pick. Remember, for landscape photography, I'm trying to impact what was already there and just enhance it a little bit more. So I'm coming into my color wheel and I'm going to pull down on my shadows to more of this purple magenta color that's showing up. Now, it looks a little bit weird right now because I'm just pulling that color out, but you can balance and blend this in to make it look a little bit more realistic. So in the balance and blending option, if I scroll down just slightly, what I can do is toggle this back and forth and see how well this is going to blend this color into my mountain range shadows. Like the more I pull it up to the right, the less of a great job it's going to do blending and the more I turn it down to the left, the more realistic and natural that color is going to appear. Balance is a little bit of the same way. Balance to the left is going to balance that color wheel and that color grading that we chose, that purple, and make it more prominent in the image with the balancing. So I like to pull that to the right just a little bit just to make it a little bit more realistic there. And if you're ever wondering what color you've selected, you can just hover over this little box right here and select that out. I like to choose colors that are closer to the midpoint of the color wheel because that's going to give me a little bit less of a saturated color, you know, that strong prominent color sticking close to the white center of the color wheel is going to allow me to find those tones. So since I have my shadows selected out, what I'm going to do to brighten those just a little bit or darken those is I can use this luminance slider to either lighten or darken. Lighten is going to be to the right. Darken is going to be to the left. I may darken these to pull out just a little bit more dynamic range in my image too, but it was a little foggy and hazy, so I don't want to lose that either. Something like minus eight. Now that I have my shadows taken care of, I'm going to go to my highlights. I'm going to come back to midtones, which is this center circle. So what I'm going to do here is just pull this up to an orange color for my highlights. And that's about right. So I am getting that orange to red to yellow look there. So with luminance, I may just brighten that up just a little bit. And I'll probably keep it about right there. And then for midtones, what I'm going to do is kind of hover somewhere in between these two, this orange and purple look to get that middle range of these colors. And that comes out as a little bit of a red and I may just brighten that up just a little bit too. So I can click on this eye icon right on the bottom right side and if I hold down on that it's going to remove what I just did so I can just click and turn that on and off just to see if I like what it's done with the overall image there. So I like what it's done for the most part here. So what I can do is go to this last color wheel and I can go to just like a global color if I want to do that. This is a, a global adjustment that you make to your overall image. So since this is looking a little bit purple, what I'm going to do is brighten this up with a little bit more of a yellow look to it and kind of counteract that purple color 
and brighten up the luminance on that just slightly as well. So something like that. Now what I can do is go back to this three-way view of these and balance out what I've done here. So you can see all three color wheels showing up. I can click and hold and remove what I've done with this eye icon just to see what it looks like with and without each one of these. And then finally, with all three of these showing up, what I can do is pull this blending up and down to see which blend I actually like the best between all these. So I go for more of a natural look. So I'm going to pull this a little bit more to the left, kind of like we had it. But once you select all these and get them where they want them, you can fine tune them with these blending and balance sliders. So if I pull the balance to the right more, it's going to bring out more of those highlight colors. If I pull to the left more, it's going to bring out more of those shadow colors. So I'm going to pull it a little bit more to the right and have this more as an orangey look. Now that I have all those done, what I want to do is complement what I've done with the color grading here. To complement this, what I'm going to do is scroll up to my hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. And just to get a little bit more of that orange look poking out, I'm going to pull up on my orange and yellow saturation sliders. And that's about where I want to have it right there. So overall, even though color grading may seem a little bit uh, scary at times or seem a little bit you know, unnecessary at times, I think it works way better than split toning and fine tuning your color details and also your luminance of your shadows and your highlights to get your images and your colors exactly where you want them for landscape photography and impacting the colors that are already there and just enhancing those a little bit more in your editing process also bringing out more of your own personal creative style.